Hello from Riverside, Iowa. Now you've probably never heard of Riverside, Iowa before, but you've almost certainly heard of its most famous future resident, James Kirk of the Starship Enterprise in Star Trek. Apparently in Gene Roddenberry's book in the 60s, he said that Kirk was born in a small town in Iowa. Well, in the 80s, a councilman from this town said, a small town in Iowa, huh? And so he said, that could be us. And everyone else agreed. And so they made Riverside, Iowa, the uh, future birthplace of James Kirk, since you know they never actually named the town. And it's since become canon because they named that his birthplace in those reboot movies they did in 2009. Proof that manifestation is real and it works. So they have a couple things in town here. They have a statue of Kirk. They have a plaque marker and there's like flags of characters uh, all over town. So we're just gonna go around and see what we see. Uh, motorcycle. We're outside of the plaque right now. It's just this cute little opening between two buildings, little courtyard area. Check out their little donation box, it's really cute. Future birthplace of Captain James T. Kirk, March 22nd, 2228. And can you really prove that there won't be a Kirk born here on that day? They're gonna have the sickest party here in this town on that date. I also noticed there's a little library outside here, so let's see if there's some good sci-fi books in there. Hmm. I was expecting a lot of sci-fi stuff. Okay, now we're talking. Hello! These are outside the post office. These must have been past stamp designs that were Star Trek themed. That's actually a really cool one. 33 cents though. How long ago was that a stamp? <laughs> I think it's up there now. This is the slogan, what they changed it to when they made themselves the birthplace. It's where the trek begins. Oh my God, look at this banner. Isn't that Spock an evil Spock from that like Mirror World episode? You know where they all had like evil versions, but it was just like them with a goatee and a gold sash or something. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'll put up the name of that episode. So this girl across the way, uh, it's a bit early to get a drink right now, but this Murphy's Bar and Grill over here, they decided to get in on things uh, when they first changed the uh, slogan for the town. Uh, they decided that if this was Kirk's birth spot, it was probably also his conception spot. So they put in a plaque under their pool table that said, Conception Place for James T. Kirk. I think they moved the plaque now out from under there so people don't have to crawl under to see it, but <laughs> good for them. We're walking further along here. There's one with Scotty, looks like Uhura. Uh, I can't see yet who that one is across the street. So I believe this barber shop here is where the plaque used to be. So if you've been here before and you thought that looked different, that's why. Uh, I think that councilman used to own that barber shop and that's why he just put it behind his place. But maybe they thought that was a little too, I don't know. It doesn't look like you can easily get back there that well. So maybe that's why they moved it over there. We're gonna go look for the statue now. Uh, this is a really nice town. We just when we were walking through and driving through earlier, uh, I didn't I didn't realize at first that we were here. It's so like, huh, this is a nice town. And then I looked at the GPS and I was like, you are one minute away. So, yeah, there's lots of like historic looking uh, houses that people have just like beautifully kept up. And yeah, I mean they're doing a little construction on some of the roads, but other than that, it's like really nice. All right, we found the statue. It's over here at the public park. And I feel like this might have been moved too because I remember seeing pictures of it somewhere else, like in front of a mural. So technically, this is not William Shatner. This is a likeness, legally distinct, of William Shatner. 
My sister and I were just sitting in the air conditioning for a minute and we were talking about William Shatner and my sister said he's like 90 something and I couldn't believe it. But yeah, we looked it up and he's 91 right now. It still doesn't seem like it could be that old, but this statue is, I don't know if this is true to height because it's kind of short, honestly. Here's me next to it. And he's on a two inch pedestal too. <laughs> Check it out on the flooring or whatever that is of the playground. They have the Starfleet insignia. And then right across the street is the museum. That's where we're gonna head next. Check it out, they have the USS Riverside, legally distinct, in front. And we missed it by about a month here, but they do something called Trek Fest uh, every last Saturday in June. That would be fun. Love to see what they have going on for that, especially over at Murphy's Bar. The museum split into like a town history and then a kind of more Trek stuff. So we're checking out the town history side first. This is someone's old photo album. Check out the fashions. It's awesome. Oh, look at these Sesame Street characters. Whoa, someone was having a party. Someone else just came in the museum and I didn't hear it when we came in, but they have like a sound effect that when the door opens and closes, it makes that shh noise, you know, that the Enterprise makes when someone comes in the door, that uh, futuristic door opening noise. Check out the cool Boy Scout patches they have for the area. Here's another one with the Enterprise on it. Oh, sorry, Riverside, legally distinct. <laughs> Triples. The triples are for sale. Yeah. Only fifty for a pair. And they love everyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the love. Yeah, for the reference. Yeah, the reference. Is this the warning? <laughs> oh, initiate. What is? Hello, this is Admiral oh. Hikaru Sulu, Commander in Chief of Starfleet cool. Command, welcoming you to Memory Alpha. I am proud to present this history of the Federation commissioned by the Council of the United Federation of Planets Dang. on the 150th anniversary Do they not make Star Trek merch or what? The documents presented in this history may be presented to the public for the first time. Working transporter it has lights and everything. Cool, huh? And there's all these buttons here that do different things. There's transport, uh, space, talks about space, the warp, red alert, hello, and Klingons. What does this one do? Check it out, they have a whole set of the captain's chair and the whole setup. And look, it was made by the local high school wood shop. What a fun project that would have been. This is Data's actual desk from Next Generation. Cool. They have a signed photo even of him. It says, to the Riverside Museum, thanks for taking care of my desk. Okay, so that's it for Riverside. That museum was really cool. I liked it in there. They had so much memorabilia and actually have a lot more that's not out because apparently we were talking to the guy, um, someone who had a enormous, enormous collection. I think it was one of the biggest, uh, just passed away unfortunately a couple months ago, but the gentleman willed his whole collection to them here at this museum. It was 47 boxes, he said. They just had the tiniest amount out so far, so it might be even even bigger in uh, the coming months. So I had to get, I'm a sucker for really well-designed, cool bumper stickers. And they had two, so I had to get both of them. I love this. Beam me home, Scotty. 
I might actually have to come back for Trek Fest because this is just a nice town. Uh, it sounds like it'd be a fun time. Uh, yeah, I would definitely recommend if you're even if you're not a huge Star Trek fan, come check it out. It's fun. It's a good time. You know, it doesn't take up too much time, and who doesn't like roadside attractions, right? So, I will see you in the next one. Bye.